Okay, uh, coming to you live from my car, so uh, I forgot my little thing that holds the camera. So um, hopefully uh, this is a good speed. I don't have good signal uh, at the campground, so uh, right now I'm just going to kind of make sure the connection is good. Hopefully this is uh, going to work out well. I had scheduled um, this to go live at 3 and I'm just going to try to make sure that everything is good with the connection. Hopefully that I'm still trying to figure out the whole YouTube live, like you can schedule one for later. So, hi Beverly, I'm good, how are you? Uh, so, uh, we'll talk about intermittent fasting. Any questions uh, anybody has about my experiences with it? Uh, I've lost uh, 75 pounds now uh, with intermittent fasting and walking six miles every day. So uh, right now I'm in uh, Sarasota, Florida. Uh, and so uh, hopefully, I don't know, it looks like it's kind of. Okay, let's see. Can you guys see me now? Sorry about that. I don't know why this seems to like it always seems to mess up the first in the first little part uh but hopefully we're back now uh so sorry if, if it uh hopefully everybody can see me now uh and if you can see me please let me know that you can see me <laughs> um let's see hi ona let's see beverly you said i notice i get lightheaded and my blood pressure is low what can you do to help that okay so i'm not a doctor uh and certainly you should talk that over with your doctor if you're get especially if your blood pressure is low um uh you need to uh thank you jay uh, that's my husband coffee 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 show so uh he'll be helping me moderate i think um uh let's see well i thought he could maybe he can't okay good hi Kristen. um so beverly uh but as, but i can at least tell you what as far as what i've experienced with lightheadedness and fasting um I really, I have not um, had any lightheadedness, but that's because I eat a, a lot at my one meal. Um, I'm w the type of person who can really sit down and eat a lot. And if I ever do experience lightheadedness, I always take that as a sign that I am not eating enough. So I would increase my food intake. But again, I'm not a doctor, so I'd highly encourage you to talk to your doctor about uh, that. Uh, hi, Graceful Sky, and um, and hi, Kristen, again, and hope you guys are doing good today. Um, okay, hopefully this signal will hold out. I don't know. Uh, I've got a bunch of bars, but I don't, there's a lot of traffic around here, so. Um, so, let's see. Um, any questions you guys have, just pop them down in the comments section there. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I was trying to think if there was any any questions lately that I've been getting in the comments section. Um, let's see. Uh, cheat day. I still, I swear it's like a cursed topic because it seems like every time I try to continue to address this, like finish addressing the thing. Uh, oh, hi, uh, Kim from Fargo, North Dakota. Funny movie Fargo was a long time ago that I've seen it though, so I can't really remember much about it. Just the very end. But, um, uh, man, it's so cool how many people, different people from all over like the United States and there's like uh, people from England that watch this and I think there was somebody from um, Taiwan maybe or I can't remember. There's There's been a lot of different countries so cool. I'm in Sarasota, Florida right now. So, um, so anyway, cheat day. Uh, that was something that somebody asked about uh, like, uh, oh, let's see, how long does it take? to get your uh, steps. It, it takes me an hour to walk three miles. Yeah, Nancy, that's about uh, what I experienced too. I walk about three miles per hour, so to get six miles is about two hours every day. Um, it's maybe a little bit more sometimes. It depends on uh, just how slow we're going. Uh, and then uh, other times it might be faster, but I really don't like walking any faster than three miles per hour. So uh, I'd prefer to just enjoy the walk. And um, so yeah, about two hours every day. Um, yeah. Hey, Nat. Nat. <laughs> I don't know how to say the last part of your screen name, or maybe that's your actual name. Uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions at all. Um, another common question I was getting was about before. Okay, so when I was intermittent fasting, but not doing OMAD. So OMAD just stands for one meal a day. 
people ask me like how did I do the fasting I mean the eating window like would I eat twice would I eat you know snacks would I eat you know what and um, my answer was I would just eat whatever and whenever but what I did notice usually with that was that I would normally eat because I was hungrier I would eat you know a pretty big lunch and then I would be hungry again at supper at that point and then I would close my window so usually I didn't snack very much but that was because I was hung like actually hungrier the first time I ate and then I would eat again so um, so yeah so that's a question I get a good bit let's see uh, let's see so uh, yeah so if you have any questions just leave them in the comments um so I was gonna talk about cheat day a little bit uh, so the thing with cheat day is to me it's a day I don't have any rules okay so whatever I want to eat whenever I want to eat it um, it's important to me to do it right um, to try to not be good and but the thing is is it's not a day where I make myself miserable it's just a day to just enjoy whatever food I've been craving and uh, just to kind of take the day off I take it off from work and I take it off from um, from from fasting okay share a new subscriber to your channel uh, thanks for subscribing uh, Thank you for your good information. I noticed you drink coffee with half and half. Uh, does that break the fast? Hearing so many different opinions. I know, Sharon, I'm uh, right there with you. You'll hear a million different opinions. Um, but here's my whole take on it. Uh, I wanted half and half of my coffee. <laughs> and uh, so my attitude was like, well, you know, I'm going to see if I can lose weight while doing it this way. Um, and I have been able to lose the weight. So I kept it. Um, I, d I just don't worry too much about like, oh, will it break the fast? I'm just more concerned about getting the weight off. So, uh, so the thing is though, you can have some calories and not break the fast in the, like from a scientific standpoint, I think, uh, just based on my limited, limited knowledge of the, 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 the actual physical aspects of it. Um, and to me, I, d I think it probably just doesn't break the fast. Um, I would always, you know, recommend people just, you know, experiment with it for yourself. See if you have results. If, if you find that you're being really, really consistent with the window, but the half and half just seems to be holding you back, you could take the half and half out. But to me, I love it and I want to keep it in there. There is a thing about when the calories are coming from fat, it doesn't really break the fast. So, I mean, I know that half and half has like one carb or something. So I, I just don't think it's enough to really break the fast. Um, let's see, Nat, I actually listen to you while I walk. <laughs> awesome. It helps to motivate you. Did you feel like uh, cheat day slowed down your progress? Actually, I don't think so. I think cheat days helped me to be super consistent in the beginning. Um, I needed them in the beginning, first of all. Like, I, it was, fasting was so different than anything I'd ever tried before. Um, and so just to have that one day to be normal, you know, like to have th that one normal day was just nice. And, uh, and it really kept me consistent. Con consistency is like, to me, the key to all this. Like if you can just do it day in and day out, like every week I'm doing, you know, pretty much six days out of seven, I'm right, you know, doing the fasting thing. So I think like counterintuitively, it probably helped me to progress faster because for one thing it kept the level of difficulty very very low uh, to me my perceived level of difficulty was like this is so easy like I can do this six days a week and then the seventh day I can just do whatever I want like it's just it made it so simple that it you know like if something feels really hard you can stick with it for a while but then eventually you just go back to doing you know whatever it was you did before because it just feels too hard but this feels so easy to me so um, uh, I mean, you know, in the future, would I take away my cheat day? I could. I think now I, I really could. Or I could, you know, maybe just do, we do the pancake breakfast on uh, Sunday morning, so it's more of a family thing uh, that really I wanted it for that day. Um, but I could probably, you know, if I wanted to, I could keep the, the family breakfast and then just, you know, have my one meal be breakfast for that one day if I wanted to in the future. But I'm still having results, so I don't really see the need to get rid of it. Uh, let's see. Have a good day. Oh, thanks, Albert. Uh, have you ever had, uh, have I ever tried dry fasting? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I don't really know what the benefits are supposed to be of, of fasting. So dry fasting, uh, my understanding, and Albert, you can correct me if I'm wrong, dry fasting means no liquids or anything like that. And, um, 
like I just again you know for me the fasting is all about from a weight loss perspective I'm trying to lose the weight so as long as I'm having results there I'm not gonna mess with it you know like, I'm not gonna make it harder than it needs to be basically so that's what I do <laughs> so I have not I have not tried that and if you do I'm curious uh, like what why do you do dry fasting versus water fasting or you know the kind of fasting that I do Let's see, Graceful, you ask, how long did it take until intermittent fasting was just a part of your normal life? Um, oh, and you're from Israel, awesome. Well, that is that is so cool. Um, uh, okay, so, so intermittent fasting for me, I started out with it in 20, well, actually I learned about it in 2014. I kind of slowly integrated it a little bit. You know how, well, at least for me, in 2015, I was just going from one thing to another, like it, it was working for me, but I really didn't want to be too aggressive with the window. So in order to try to get, you know, faster results, I ended up just kind of trying everything. And, you know, I do intermittent fasting and I would then start counting calories and just driving myself crazy in general. Um, but when I actually went to one meal a day, um, or when, when, when I really got really consistent with, uh, in 2016, January, 2016 is really when I said, okay, just intermittent fasting, and walking. I'm just simplifying it down. Um, it really didn't take me long at all. Um, it's, I would say now <laughs> that's, you know, a couple of years ago, now it's just like super, super routine for me. Um, I just, you know, like I think most people uh, that I've talked to who have really just gone from like, they've done it, you know, like the regular eating and then bam, they started intermittent fasting, even OMAD. Um, and you know, it takes a couple of weeks for them to really get used to it. Um, and then it just becomes like, okay, this is what I do. So, uh, to me, my body can quickly turn from one to the other now, like, because I'm doing, you know, a cheat day on Sunday. So I, you know, I'm eating all day on Sunday and then I can just go right back to it. So it, it, it becomes routine, I think pretty quickly. Uh, let's see. Christina, I'm just amazed how you wake up at five in the morning and how long have you been doing that and how in the world do you do that? <laughs> so, okay. So I, like when I was overweight, I wanted to sleep like all the time. Like I needed to sleep late, you know, and, um, uh, I seemed to wake up a lot at, during the night, like, um, to go to the bathroom and stuff. But, um, uh, then once I started reading, like once I started really having some success with losing weight and, um, and especially with intermittent fasting, I think there's just something about, and I, and I've read some, some stuff about this, um, about how your body really just doesn't require as much sleep when you're intermittent fasting. Um, and I don't know, uh, exactly why it's something probably about the fat burning, but, uh, I just wake up like this morning, actually, I woke up at four <laughs> and you know, with no alarm or anything, I woke up at four and I was awake. Like, I, and that's another thing. When I wake up, I just get up and I start my day. So, uh, but you know, but I don't think that's required or anything. I mean, there are times where I've gone through and, you know, like I require a little bit more sleep. I think a lot of that's hormonal too, but, um, yeah, I, I love getting up early cause it gives me a good start on my day though. Okay. What time do I go to bed? I go to bed at about nine okay so we try to start getting the kids in bed around 8 30 and then by nine they're usually maybe in bed <laughs> so um so yeah and then i you know i we go to sleep because we we live in an rv um because we're full-time RVing. so uh you know like we all kind of go to bed at the same time uh we'll watch you know an episode of psych and then i, I i'm usually out just a few minutes into it um so okay let's see does my <laughs> Now you ask, does my husband fast with me? If not, did that make it hard for you? Okay. So in the beginning, he did not fast at all. I mean, he is skinny. First of all, he is a skinny guy. He's always been a skinny guy. Never had to struggle with weight at all. Um, and so he, uh, like shouldn't, he really shouldn't fast probably, but, um, uh, for a long time, he did not even even try it because he didn't need to um, and I don't blame him like if you don't need to lose the weight then why would you fast um, uh, so it was not hard for me okay but it was hard for him <laughs> like I would sit down and try to you know like I would say well you know you can go ahead and eat and I'll just you know 
I'll, I'll just sit here and, <laughs> and you know, spend time with you. And um, it bothered him so much that I wasn't eating. Like, he just didn't want to eat in front of me. And so, uh, so we just had to kind of modify that. Like, we'll have coffee together. But I don't sit down with him while he's eating. Now, he did recently try intermittent fasting and uh that was pretty funny like he he's actually sometimes he'll do it with me now um because he he sees that it's really beneficial as far as like you're a lot you can be a lot more productive you're not taking time out of your day constantly to eat um but again you know he needs the calories so uh you know he's not he's not a what i would call a consistent faster yet <laughs> maybe he's in the comment section I don't know if he's gonna add anything on that um, but but to add, so yeah so it didn't make it hard for me but it was kind of hard for him Carlene hey Carlene uh, you finally caught me live could you please tell me how you could go from two meals a day to one should I start out slow and try it only a couple of days a week okay that's a good question um so the way I went from it was actually on accident. Um, I can't, uh, I know I've talked about this before, but um, uh, I had gotten basically to like an 18 or maybe even like a 24, you know, so I was fasting for about 20 hours and I just had this hang up about, you know, like, oh, I need to at least eat twice a day. Like, you know, I was always like paranoid that this was going to screw up my hormones or something. So, but one day the stomach virus went through our house and I was just so nervous that I just couldn't eat. And so I went all day without eating. And then like, finally, I just made myself eat something at supper time. I thought, huh, you know, that I didn't die, <laughs> you know, like I was fine. Uh, and I didn't get sick, but, uh, and so then the next day I did it again. And then I thought, hmm, okay. And I did it again and again. So, um, so it was kind of accidental for me. Um, but I think you should push it out slowly. Like, um, you know, I always want it to feel easy for people and I don't even know that one meal a day should be anybody's goal as far as like, like a blanket statement. I think as long as you're having results that you're good with, stay where you're at. But if you're wanting to increase the speed of weight loss, yeah, probably, you know, shortening your, your eating window, lengthening your fasting window. That's what always works for me. So, um, yeah, so I always like the slow and steady. Uh, that's just me though. Uh, and then, you know, and you could, you could try it and just say, okay, I'm going to just try it one time and then, you know, see how you feel. Like literally really pay attention to how you're feeling. And then, you know, if you really don't feel too bad, then try it again. And then, you know, eventually you'll be a one meal a day if that's what you want to do. Uh, let's see. So I hope that answers your question, Carlene. Okay. The six, the six miles is marvelous, but I really floundered trying to achieve OMAD. Uh, thanks for any tips. P.S. Uh, you and Andrea are adorable in your coffee show. Oh, thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, okay, so OMAD. Again, with OMAD, I don't know that that should be your goal. Like, it's all about trying to fit this into your lifestyle. Like, it works for me because, you know, breakfast and lunch are just kind of you know, it's not a big family sit down type thing for those two meals. We do have, you know, the sit down thing for supper. Uh, so it was very important for me to have supper with them. So, um, so in other words, I wouldn't just arbitrarily set OMAD as your goal. Um, just be really, really consistent. Cause I mean, people have results on, you know, like 18, 16, eight is generally where people kind of start having results. 18, six, I think, is even better as far as just my own personal experience as far as what I've noticed um, and what I've heard other people because I'm always asking people like okay so what kind of fasting are you doing and having success with and you know when you get to that kind of you know that point you know you're still probably eating twice a day um, but most people are losing but if, if you're not um, and you really are trying to get to OMAD then slow and steady uh, and focusing on consistency though, like focus on being very, very, very consistent at a, at a shorter fast. And then when you can be really consistent with that, then baby step it up a little bit and say, okay, I'm going to go a little bit longer and I'm going to be really consistent there. And then, you know, it's just a habit. You gotta, you gotta train yourself basically. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that helps Susan and then keeping yourself busy. That's, you know, like if you're having trouble with your fasting window, um, 
well, two things. Make sure you're eating enough during your eating window um, because I make sure I am full. Um, and then keep yourself busy. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, 20th Century Hay says, I'm into my third week of OMAD. Love it. Uh, thanks for the great motivation. Great. I'm glad you find it motivating. Uh, some days I feel weak in your body, like your arms and legs. Did I feel that too? Will it fade moving forward? Okay, so whenever I feel, I mean, because occasionally it might happen. It doesn't happen very much, but then I always take it as a signal. You did not eat enough at your last meal. So I just am more conscious of, conscious conscious of eating more at my one meal um that doesn't really happen to me though um i'm trying to think like you know sometimes hormonally th things like that can kind of happen um but yeah i don't really i like my legs have been a little bit sore um because the other day we were walking out in the heat and i think that was just from um you know not drinking enough water i should have probably drunk more water while we were walking because it was super hot that day and we were out in the blazing sun so uh so yeah make sure you're drinking plenty of water and then also make sure you're eating enough um but 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 then also i found just the longer i did intermittent fasting the the more normal it is like the the more i just get used to it so you know uh so like i, I don't feel that weakness so Okay, Albert says, hey, you don't drive fast, just wondering. Uh, thanks for your cheery spirit. Uh, well, thanks for uh, joining me here on uh, this live. Uh, talk to you later. Okay, see you, Albert. Nancy asks, is it hard to do intermittent fasting and still make meals for kids? Okay, so, uh, no, <laughs> but uh, not anymore. Okay, in the beginning, that was, that was a tougher thing because, like, you know, I, I was always a grazer, you know, eat a bite of anything that I was making for the kids, you know, any kind of leftovers they had, you know, oh, I don't want food to go to waste, you know, so I'd eat it. Um, but, to, so I did deal with that a couple of different ways. First of all, my kids, I teach them to be self-sufficient. And so my older two, especially at that point in their lives, they were able to make their own breakfast. Um, and my six-year-old, uh, now, you know, he can, uh, do most of his breakfast. Um, but, uh, then also my husband pitched in too. So, um, uh, so it, it was a group effort. Basically I, I tried to put the, the cooking burden off of me as much as I could. Um, but now it's very easy. Like I can sit there and cook at, like eggs and bacon, you know, turkey bacon, but, um, uh, and, toast and butter it and everything and I just say well you know like if this looks good to you you can have it on Sunday and so that gets me through so yeah hopefully that answers the question okay uh, uh, thanks for your reply you're welcome graceful uh, wow so I can't wait <laughs> to not need so much sleep yeah it really you know like that that might not happen for everybody but I did look you know i've looked into it it seems to be a pretty common thing with intermittent fasters um and like on reddit there was a lot of people that uh experienced the same kind of thing uh sarah asked do you uh, do you have any issues with heartburn uh you're doing 24 and having a bit of an issue you know um uh i don't uh i'm trying to think like it's, it's always difficult to answer these questions like sometimes because it's like well you know I've had kids and then having kids has um, changed some stuff about me um, but like for example after I had my first kid for whatever reason uh, any kind of tomatoey thing kind of gives me heartburn um, like spaghetti and stuff like that and I still experience that but I, that was really more from the pregnancy um, actually my digestion has gotten better, I think. Um, when I think about, you know, back when I was overweight, I had a lot, like, um, I got to the point where I was feeling really miserable after I would eat fried foods. Um, and I think that, I think I read, you know, it might be a gallbladder thing, but I, I don't experience that anymore. That was just back then. Uh, that was one of those symptoms where I thought, uh, probably need to really lose weight since I'm having, you know, like it was just starting to feel like, man, I'm having all these issues. So, um, yeah, but I don't, I really don't get heartburn. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I don't experience that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you could talk to your doctor about it. Like, uh, if you maybe got some, uh, if you need maybe to take some, uh, antacids or something. Um, 
or you know like some people like to drink milk and stuff uh, with a meal to kind of help uh, let's see sorry my husband said for now I'm not being consistent faster uh, and he's used to me eating or not eating. Yeah, so he doesn't feel so bad anymore. Okay, Nick says hi from the uh, UK. Well, hello from uh, America. Uh, I've been experimenting with 18.6 for a while, but moved to OMAD last Saturday. Do I miss breakfast food? You know what? I love breakfast food. It is one of my favorite types of food actually is breakfast food um, but I have it at night I just eat it at my one meal when I'm craving it like hash browns or fried eggs or turkey bacon or buttery toast I just have it for supper or I have it on cheat day um, and so that makes it easy um, uh, but yeah breakfast breakfast for dinner I, I like especially if I'm craving it, I'm like yes we'll just have that tonight but um, yeah like if uh, that was one of the things that was I was concerned about. I was like, oh, I just love breakfast food. You can just have it for supper. Okay, you mentioned in your last live vid that uh, you stay busy, and I tried that the past couple of days, and boy, uh, did I not eat. <laughs> I was so busy intentionally doing things that I needed to get uh, done anyway. It worked. Oh, good. Kristen, that's awesome. Yeah, um, I never realized how much time I really had until, until like it's like I can't eat right now so it just opened up my world it was great um, that's that's great though okay uh, have you noticed any muscle loss since it's hard to get a lot of protein in when it melts um, Steph no uh, I would really recommend um, Dr. Jason Fung did about an hour-long interview and he talked all about the scientific aspects of fasting and basically well I mean you know I'm not a doctor but to sum up what he talks about is when you're overweight your body has to burn you know in, or, in order like when you're not eating then your body will burn fat um, and so he goes into a lot of depth on that whole thing all the you know the worries like basically unless you are you know you have no body fat and you're trying to build muscle you really shouldn't worry too much about protein intake and all that with fasting but uh his video i'll i'll link to it um uh it's on uh oh the video about loose skin if you go to my blog post about that i did link to that video but i'll, I'll also try to remember to put it in the description um okay uh let's see here uh, 20th century. Hey, so thanks for your reply. Your video is really motivating. Well, thanks. And greetings from Sweden. Oh, wow. Man, what an international group we have. So cool. I'll, I would love to go to Sweden sometime. Uh, hi there. Greetings from Greece. Well, hi uh, from America. Uh, great to see you live again. Uh, love OMAD. Four months and 10 kilos down. That is awesome. That is, that is awesome. I'm uh, happy to hear that. Uh, local Kiwi alien. Uh, that that is great. Let's see, ten kilos. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw it up if I say how many pounds that is. So you can put how many pounds if you know it. <laughs> okay, Angelica Cervantes, uh, new viewer. So you eat whatever you want during your one meal. Yes, that is exactly what I do. So I eat once a day. Okay, one meal. I sit down. I eat, and that's it. Um, but at that one meal, I eat whatever I want, however much I want. I don't, I don't count calories. I don't do macros. It's just whatever my family is eating. So, yeah. And I also drink coffee three times a day with half and half. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, thank you for the reply. My next challenge is more steps. Uh, managing uh, 10,000 a day. Awesome. Yeah, and that's that is great like being consistent with the 10,000 and then uh, and then just working your way up. That's great. Uh, Steph says I'll check him out. Thanks. I've been enjoying OMAD but not getting a lot of protein makes me anxious. Yeah, I know. It's what, one of those things people freak out about but he does a great job of explaining it. So highly recommend that video. Uh, greetings from Orlando. Oh, cool. We lived uh, for a long time just above Orlando in Lake County, but now we're uh, full-time RVing and we're in Sarasota right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, 10 kilos equals 22 pounds. That is awesome. So, local Kiwi alien, is that right? You've lost like 22 pounds? That is amazing in four months. That's awesome. That is awesome. How much do I squat? I don't. <laughs> so, okay. You, I'm always barely catching you. I oh, I think um, uh, I think let's see, maybe uh, maybe you just found the feed. Maybe it sounds better in pounds. Yeah, 
we Americans love to, to make our, our weight loss sound better, I guess. <laughs> oh, that is great. 10 pounds. Uh, oh, your name is Linda. Okay, so I, hopefully I can remember that. I'm really bad with names, uh, but my aunt's name is Linda, so I'll try to remember that. Uh, and Sonia, you're down 10 pounds. That is awesome. That is, that is awesome. Congratulations on that. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, well, we've been live for 31 minutes. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. Hello from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Oh, I've heard it's beautiful there. I would love to go to Wyoming. Uh, do you ever get, just get really hungry? <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, if so, what do you do? Sorry if I've already answered this. No, I was actually thinking I should do a whole video just about dealing with hunger. Um, because it is occasionally something I experience. Um, so, I just don't eat. <laughs> that, I mean, like, the, the, the short answer is, I just don't eat. Um, most, of the most of the time, I would say the vast majority of the time, uh, it's not real hunger that I'm feeling. Most of the time, whenever I start to feel hungry, I'm stressed, or I'm bored, or, you know, uh, I'm tired, like maybe I didn't get enough sleep one night. Um, generally that's what the hunger is sometimes the hunger is just like hey you know yesterday was cheat day and you fed me at 10 o'clock so I'm hungry at 10 o'clock you know and again that's not real hunger um, uh, and I've talked about this before too but like around like a couple of days before my period usually the hunger ramps up and um, in in the beginning of intermittent fasting I would eat a snack like a candy bar one day out of the month just to get me through because it was like well, it was really for my husband's sake and my kids sake because apparently I would get really hangry and he was like please just could you just eat something <laughs> so so I would do that um, but yeah but basically what it comes down to is wh the way I deal with it is I just get busy so I get you know I go out and I get my steps in if I've already got my steps in then I'm like I've got work I can do you know um, there's tons of uh, stuff that I can do with you know the website or you know we've got a couple other YouTube channels and uh, you know general house cleaning even it, just anything to keep me busy like there's always something to do if you want to do it so yeah uh, that's how I deal with it but it doesn't happen too often. I'll, I'll, yeah, I should say that too. Like, now that I'm so used to it, it just, it doesn't happen too much. Um, let's see. How many calories do you cut out of your diet when you're trying to lose weight? John, uh, I tried counting calories at one point in my life um, in 2015, and it drove me crazy. I started weighing and measuring food, and it made me feel super deprived. So, when I started intermittent fasting, I said, well, that's the first thing to go. I'm not going to count calories. I'm just going to worry about my window. I'm only going to focus on eating during a certain time. I'm not going to focus on calories. I don't count calories, and I just don't, so I don't. Um, again, that Jason Fung video, he goes into some stuff about calories. Um, I'm not a scientist, and I'm not a doctor, so I really can't comment real intelligently on all that. Um, but I can just tell you what I've done, which is... I sit down, I eat my one meal, and however many calories I'm getting in that one meal is what I'm eating. Um, so, yeah. So I don't, I don't count them. Um, yeah. It, it could be that I'm just not getting um, as many calories uh, as normal. Like if, if I were eating, you know, all day long, obviously I'd be getting more calories and all that. But there's some scientific stuff, you know debate about you know cal calories in versus calories out again I just I just know what works for me um good idea at hunger <laughs> uh drink more water if you're hungry great idea John uh yeah a lot of times that is something like just the act of just drinking something uh, coffee helped me obviously too um that I should have said that too like when I would feel hunger especially in the early days if I would just have some coffee it's like the hunger went away um, and then drink water. That's a very good one. Uh, child from Sicily. Oh, Sicily. It is beautiful there. I've been there. And the water is so blue. It's the bluest water I've ever seen in my life. It is gorgeous. Uh, I love your channel and I'm amazed at how our lives mirror each other. I appreciate your honesty. Well, thank you, Tammy. I, I always try to just lay it out there. <laughs> Sometimes people get up with me because I don't you know, do some things like they think I should, but, you know, 
I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate the honesty. Um, uh, and thanks for watching. Kathy, thank you. You're welcome. I don't know what you what what you're thanking me for, but you're welcome if that was directed towards me. Uh, do I drink teas? I keep reading and hearing that coffee, even black, and plain tea breaks your fast. Well, Sonia, I know you hear everything, um, and again, I just don't. I I listen to it and then I take it with a grain of salt and then I do what I want to do because for me it was like I'm just gonna experiment and see if it works. So. Um, so that's what I've done. Um, I said, I'm going to, I really, you know, again, asking yourself, what would it look like if it were easy? To me, that meant I could have coffee basically whenever I wanted, which for me is like three times a day. I don't really want it more than that, but, uh, and I'm going to have it with my half and half, just how I want it. And, um, and I'm just going to have it and, and we'll see if it works. And it has. So, you know, there comes an amount, like some people get really dogmatic with it and like they get really strict and I feel like you just don't have to stress about it that much. But, uh, let's see, Shush Lorraine since May 13 down 10 pounds. Awesome. That is so cool. Uh, I'm so glad that I've been helped to you. I, I, I'm honored. Um, <laughs> can I do a backflip? No, sadly I cannot. I did do the monkey bars the other day, but I cannot do a backflip. I've never been able to do a backflip. I mean, maybe in the water and maybe like, you know, one of those pathetic little like backflips that's not like a backflip. It's like, you know, just roll backwards on your head. I can do that, but uh, I would not, I would like to not count calories, but I'm concerned about gaining weight. Okay, Beverly, right. I, I feel your pain because I was right there with you and really I thought, if I don't count calories and I only do intermittent fasting, like there's no way I'll lose weight, but I have. Um, it really helped me to not stress when I just said, I'm just going to see. And really my plan, my plan was always like, okay, I'm going to just focus on the fasting. And if I, if I'm not losing, then I'll shorten the window. And uh, like I told you, you know, uh, earlier, uh, or not you particularly, but um, what I was talking about earlier was, I just kind of accidentally got down to one meal a day and even that wasn't like, I wasn't doing it on purpose. It just kind of accidentally happened. And then I started having a little faster results. Like before when I was doing like two meals a day, it was like a little less than a pound. And then when I got to one meal a day, it was like a little over a pound, but 1.16 pounds a week, I think was the, the actual number. So, um, so basically my fears were unfounded. You, your results may vary, but um, I just don't count calories. Occasionally, I will look at the calorie count of stuff. Um, like we were at Chick Fil A the other day, and I had the four count chicken strips with oh I don't know probably three or four of those little uh, Chick Fil A sauce things, and the fries, and we even had a coffee thing, frozen coffee thing. I mean, and that's probably a lot of calories. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I started looking at the menu trying to see, and then, and then that reminded me like, oh man, it just drove me crazy when I tried to count calories, but like, especially the little sauce packets, because man, they get you. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, does eating whatever you want, okay, Sonia asked, uh, does eating whatever you want consist of things like pizzas, breads, and things of that nature? Yes, that's exactly the point, is I wanted to be able to eat everything my family was eating. I didn't want it to be like, oh, well, I guess I never get to have bread again, you know, because I knew deep down, sure, maybe I can get rid of bread for a short period of time, but eventually it's going to come back in my life. So I just wanted to keep it in my life and say, I'm going to just figure it out eating all the things I normally eat. So yeah, it's everything. Do I, did you see any mental benefits from losing weight, clear mind, etc.? Jim asked. Yes. Um, my mental clarity and focus has been so much better with uh, fasting and you know it's hard to say like is it the fasting or is it the losing weight um but certainly when i lost the weight just so much worry and stress was gone i mean it, it's not that i have a stress stress free life now but um it just touches so many little parts of your day um in a bad way when you're not happy with where you're at um weight wise um and so now all that's like gone so then I just have you know it, it's a more carefree kind of like it frees up a lot of your brain I think so um, uh, but yeah I do feel like I can focus better too okay 
let's see. Uh, brand new viewer here. So, uh, are you still losing weight? Still doing OMAD maintenance OMAD? Okay. So, uh, yes, I am still losing weight. I'm losing weight very slowly. Um, I figured it out um, the other day for somebody because they were asking. Since I started the YouTube channel, I've been losing at a rate of about a third a pound a week. And my goal is like a half a pound a week, which we did have Christmas in the middle of there. And that is one thing. Like, I had a little bit of a gain during Christmas because I went off plan a good bit. But, um, so yeah, I'm still losing slowly. Uh, and I'm just doing one meal a day. And th coffee three times a day. Um, but I, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm okay with the slow loss because right now I'm at a normal weight. Like, for my, for my height, um, I should be between 115 and 154, and I'm like at 145, so I'm good. Uh, I'm good with that, basically. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and you're concerned about doing maintenance. So, Beverly, um, that was one thing that I, like, maintenance was the thing I was probably more scared of than the trying to figure out the weight loss part, because I just hate you know, I hate losing weight and then gaining it back. Like, I just, I feel like everybody's concentrating on me. I know that that's not true. So that was something I was super concerned with. Like, what if I lose the weight and then I start gaining it back? And then, you know, I feel like everybody's going to be like, oh, well, she just couldn't keep it off, you know. Um, but first of all, nobody's paying attention. Uh, <laughs> but um, maintenance for me was super easy. Um, I did like a modified intermittent fasting thing and just I the main thing for me was continue to weigh every day keep track of that seven day average and it was fine so uh, maintenance was actually super super easy I uh, can I do a front flip no except for this kind of sad one where you just like put your head on the ground and flip over um, but yeah let's see uh, Andrea have you practiced fasting for God? Has religion and fasting uh, overlapped in any way? Do you feel more connected? Okay, so I did not do this in the beginning for any kind of spiritual reason. It was purely like, I just want to get the weight off. Um, however, you know, pretty much all religions, I mean, or, or most of them, have some sort of fasting aspect. You know, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights and all that. So I knew that there was that kind of connection, but I, you know, I really wasn't doing it for that. However, um, I do think I've learned a lot. I feel, I do feel more, you know, more connected to God, I guess would be the right way to say it. Um, and I realized how much I let food control my life and how much I cared about food and, uh, and, and, and I'm pretty ashamed of it now, actually. Like, I would let things ruin my day <laughs> about food, you know, like, um, or I would just be so obsessed with food, like, you know, that would be the most exciting part of my day. Um, so to put food back in its right place or in, in getting it back in perspective, like now I just don't even care what we eat at night. Like I just care that, you know, it's food and it's, you know, going to fill me up. Um, so it has taught me some things. So, uh, let's see. Uh, and, and a lot of other people, I'll say that uh, a lot of other people have uh, told me they've had the same kind of experiences like with fasting. They, you know, some people come at this from a religious standpoint, uh, you know, and they're trying to get closer to God and they've found that to be true. So, uh, let's see. Can you please remind us uh, how much uh, you've lost overall and how long it took you? I can't remember. Okay. So. I've lost right at 75 now. I'd have to look at my spreadsheet, which I don't have in front of me, but uh, it is, uh, I did, so I did 65 in the beginning and I've lost about 10 more, 12 more. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I, my, my seven day average is, um, I think right at a 75 pound weight loss right now. Uh, so the initial weight, how long did that take? So in 2015, uh, I started weighing myself in February, and I lost about 15 pounds-ish that first year, um, but the weight started to go back up, because at that point, I was still just doing everything and, you know, not having a real consistent plan, and then in gen January 2016, I started out the year at like 207, and then I lost down to 157, 
so that's about 50 pounds from and that was that was by uh, the beginning of November so in about 11 months I lost about 50 pounds um, and then so then since I started the YouTube channel I've lost about another 10 to 12 yeah so um, and again like so since the YouTube channel started it's been about a third of a pound of weight loss a week on average okay Let's see. Uh, let's see. So hopefully that answers your question. Now, Beverly, I text that wrong. If you uh, if you were doing twenty four, would you count the calories? No. Um, I again, you know, uh, I was all about not wanting to have to count calories, and I did. I ne I never did. So um, in twenty sixteen, up until about April, I was doing two meals a day. And I was losing a little less than a pound a week. Uh, yeah, a pound a week. And so, um, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I wouldn't, I, to me, <laughs> I don't think you have to count calories. I think that if you just focus on being consistent with your window, I think you'll, I think you'll lose weight. Um, and then, you know, and again, my philosophy was, you know, I would rather shorten my window and eat whatever I wanted rather than count calories and have a longer window. Um, uh, let's see. Has my hair thinned or fallen out? No. Um, like, you know, with kids, uh, like when you're pregnant, uh, it seems like my hair was thinner after pregnancy than before. Uh, but I've had three kids, but no, my hair, you know, I don't know. That's what my hair looks like. Uh, Let's see. Do I take any vitamins or supplements? No, I don't. I used to take a, a multivitamin, and I've been thinking about adding that back in, but then I heard, you know, like some guy on the Tim Ferriss podcast basically saying you shouldn't take a multivitamin. And then I looked at research, and then it was kind of like, man, you know, there's some studies that say it actually can increase cancer risk, and then others say it can decrease it. So it was kind of one of those things that I just kind of threw my, threw my hands up and thought, I don't even know anymore. So. I might start taking one, but you know, I'm fine. <laughs> so, um, I mean, humans have lived without multivitamins for a long time, but, uh, and so some people say it just makes your pee really expensive because you just end up, you know, peeing it all out. But anyway, that's probably too much information. Okay. So we've been live for 48 minutes now, so I should probably start wrapping this up. Um, uh, so thank you guys for joining me. Uh, oh, let's see one more question uh, what do you eat in your hours uh, that's what the crusader asked um, anything I want uh, elbow drops I don't know what elbow drops are but um, uh, I eat whatever I want so uh, like you know last night we had like eggs and avocado and uh, you know like a like a breakfast burrito type thing uh, we have beans and rice. We just eat everything. Like it, it's a very varied kind of diet. Like um, spaghetti and meatball, or usually just spaghetti, is there one night with jarred sauce, dried pasta. You know, um, uh, just whatever, whatever I want. Uh, okay. So, all right. Well, I think that'll do it for uh, this live episode. Thanks for joining me. Um, oh, also, uh, I did start some forums over on my website. Uh, some people had asked for that. Um, and so that's a great place to go and, you know, ask questions and, you know, for people to share experiences. I just kind of thought it'd be a good way. Uh, so somebody had, had, Darlene is her name. She had said, you know, could we start a Facebook page or a, a, a forum or something? So I chose forum because not everybody's on Facebook. And, um, and the forums seem to be a good place where people can, you know, post questions and kind of get encouragement from people. So, uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. I appreciate all the questions and I think I'm going to try to do this every Wednesday at three. Um, so, uh, I try to also post it on, uh, like on YouTube. So, but I think you have to like be, uh, notified, like you have to hit the bell. I think or something like that so that you get the notification that says I'm going live but um, uh, anyway so be sure to have notifications turned on but I'll try to do it at 3 o'clock on Wednesdays 
we'll see. I always have to have internet though, uh, internet access, so it's kind of a challenge. Uh, Sarah, I would uh, be nice to see what you would eat uh, on a day, probably a Sunday though. Thanks for all the motivation. Never thought I could uh, could do it, and she's been there for uh, two weeks. That is awesome. Um, yeah, uh, I did post one week what I ate in a random week, um, and you can go check that out. It's on my website. It's the meal plan. Just put in meal plan in the search bar, and it'll show you what I what I ate every single day that week, uh, which would include a Sunday. Uh, okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate uh, all your kind words, and uh, I'll see you next week.